Hey friends, DM Scotty here. As some of you may know, I have recently completed my game room. I still have some details to, do, to work on, so that's why I haven't given a tour, a video tour of the game room. But I have kind of one big project left to do, and I wanted to do that before I gave the tour. But I did work on a cool project. It was a monster, a, a severed monster head. I'm a, I'm kind of, a, I'm, I love fantasy, sci-fi, horror, and so this is more of a fantasy game room. But I wanted to have kind of a, a horror element with uh, like a, a severed monster head, right? And uh, it, it, I was really happy how it came out. Basically, I bought a mask after Halloween and used that as the basis for the project, and then added details. But uh, I just wanted to warn you that uh, I mean it's you know it's it's it is it is a horror element so there is some gore to it if you're not if that's something you don't want to see or you know you don't like you may want to you know not watch the whole video or anything but uh, I'll just give you kind of an idea here we're going into the game room and I'll kind of show you what it's like here and I've got it uh, uh, the lights kind of down so you know those who don't want to really see it don't have to but. Um, the monster head you can see is over there across the room and I was really happy with how it came out but let me give you kind of an idea what it looks like so as we get closer the you know the light uh, the light behind it and everything but you can see some of the detail there and uh, you can't see too much gore at this point but uh, yeah so I wanted to give you an idea kind of in shadow what it looked like and if those who want to Watch the rest of the video and see how I made this critter. Uh, come join me at my table. Those who this is a little too gory for, you know, not interested, uh, now's your probably a good time to bail out. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. And it's a nice kind of gruesome trophy for my game room. Thank you. All right, guys, I picked up a styrofoam head. I smashed the nose because the mask I have for this craft has no nose, so <laughs> I squished the nose. It has this little nubbin on there. I'll just kind of rip that off. Just easy to tear off, and it won't hurt the project at all. And I have that hole in the center. I'm going to use it. I'll show you later why. Here's my mask I picked up. It was just an after Halloween sale, and I picked it up. It's just I thought it was a fun mask for my monster head project, and uh, it just has that kind of cowl that goes over your head. But I'm going to use that to go over the styrofoam head. So I'll just open her up. I'm going to take my hot glue gun and squirt some glue in there. Places that I think will contact the styrofoam head, right? Now that I've got all the glue on there, I'll apply it to the styrofoam head. You don't want to take too long because you don't want the glue to harden up before you get it on there. Oh, boo! <laughs> I got these butcher's meat hooks. I thought these would be really cool uh, for hanging the head up, right? And they're just plastic chains. Not a great paint job, but we'll fix that. But the hooks are fantastic. I love these hooks. They're just really vicious looking. And these will be great for the uh, head to be uh, impaled on. <laughs> now, you can pick up these hooks at Halloween stores, or just you can get them any time of the year on Amazon, so you can find those there. For the styrofoam head, I want to have the hook, you know, impaling the head, so I, I actually carved out the back of the head with just a box cutter. Then I'm going to guesstimate where the hook would come out of the front of the head, and I'll just make a hole with the box cutter in the front. Easy to cut through. Now here's the bottom of my head, and uh, I'm going to add some hot glue here because I want it to look like a kind of a rough surface where it's, the head's been chopped off, right? The flesh and stuff hanging down. So I'm just going to kind of fill this in with hot glue and smear it around. Now the hot glue will melt the styrofoam a little bit, but don't worry that, that much about it because, you know, it'll just add to the effect. It'll just make it look nice. So just fill that bottom in there with the hot glue. You want kind of a nice bumpy appearance, an uneven appearance for where the head's been uh, severed. Now you guys may have seen me do this technique before. I'm going to use parchment paper to make a gore that hangs down from the head, right? First thing I want to do is ring the severed neck with kind of like ripped flesh, right? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to do a line of hot glue, pull down from that line, and I'll get kind of a nice raggedy uh, flesh-like, you know, ripped flesh line that I can put on the bottom of the head. It's just clear right now, but once we get this painted, ooh, ooh boy, it's going to look great. The great thing about this parchment paper is this stuff will just come right off. It won't stick to it. 
So it's a fantastic resource when you're doing this kind of building up hot glue uh, techniques like this. Just keep building that hot glue on top of each other until you get a nice thickness. The reason I'm building up like this and not just putting a huge glop of it on there is it tends to just kind of congeal into a blob and you lose the detail. So if you build it up like this, you keep that detail that you build in without just becoming like one big blob. I also want to do some kind of like veins hanging down. So I'm doing some uh, kind of pulls with the glue gun over the parchment paper. And this is going to be like some nice veiny looking uh, <laughs> stuff I can hang from the bottom of the, of the neck. I warned you this was going to be gory. <laughs> Just adding some more detail to these veins I'm going to have hanging from the bottom of this neck. <laughs> I just let my hot glue harden up and whoop, it just pulls right off. Isn't that fantastic? The veins are kind of flat on one side, so I'm going to add, uh, turn them over to the flat side and add a little more hot glue to the other side. That'll, that'll kind of uh, 3D them out a little more than having that flat side. The trick now is just to add them around the base of the neck. So I'll just kind of check that out how far I need to have the glue go and just put a bead of hot glue on there and apply it to the neck nice and raggedy now I'll just take the other piece and fill in the place that I missed since the uh, first one wasn't long enough to go around the whole neck just cut it with some scissors and you're good to go I want that to blend into the neck a little better instead of you know having oh here's the the shard part or here's the rip part and here's not I'm just gonna add some hot glue at the top of the of the rips and just pull it up onto the neck and that'll nicely blend it into the neck here I have my neck and I've got the, you know the gore on the edge there so I'm gonna put some more hot glue in here and this will secure the gore to the edge and kind of blend it in right just pull that glue up on there and it'll give a nice secure bond. I'm also putting some kind of veiny uh, marks on here. Just drag the hot glue over the surface and you'll get those kind of, you know, vein look. look. More veins, more veins, more veins. Now you notice I left that hole open in the center and I'm going to show you here soon why. Alright, so I've glued some of these veins to the thing, right? And just hold it for a few seconds, let it dry. You want it to kind of look like it's hanging down, so you don't want too much of an angle on these. And uh, <laughs> I think that's going to be nice and gross. All right, now I'm going to do my paper towel and glue technique. I'm going to put some full strength glue on the neck, fold it over, and just kind of bend it around the neck. And now I'll just water it. So the water makes it malleable, but it also sticks to the glue. It helps it stick to the neck and the glue. So we'll just finish this neck off here. Now that I've got the paper towel all secure how I want it, I'm going to use my 50% water, 50% white glue, and I'll just soak this paper towel, right? Uh, so just pour it on there, let it soak into the paper towel, and you'll get a nice tough finish when this all dries. It'll be uh, nice and secure onto the styrofoam head. It's a bit of a mess now, but uh, yeah, it'll work great, and it'll look like uh, old wrinkled skin on the neck. Now that it's dry, I'm going to put some hot glue on here and this will blend it in to the neck so just add some hot glue around the edge and pull it up onto the neck give you a nice texture as well as blending it in and make it nice and secure I really like my Surebonder glue gun it has some great features check out my video if you haven't seen it you can uh, check out my link to get one but I also like the I replaced the nozzle with that long thin nozzle and you can get that as a special set from Surebonder and you may want to check that out because it's really great for blending hot glue I've been talking about the hole in the neck and I really want to do a thing with the spine coming down and uh, I had this rubber snake from Halloween the skeletal rubber snake I cut this off and you can just put it in the hole and uh, look how great that's going to look uh, sticking out there, you know, once we, uh, once we get all this painted up. All right, so here's my chain here. I got this from Amazon. I love the size. I love the look. But it's, you know, not a great paint job, right? So we're going to spiff this up a bit. I got some metallic spray paint and I have some brown texture paint. I'll hit it with the metallic paint first. And you can see that that's already improving the look of this chain right it doesn't have to be perfect I mean it's gonna be like an old chain so don't worry if you miss some spots or whatever 
but I'm gonna use the brown kind of texture paint to just hit it a little bit. It'll look, give it some wear, it'll give it some dirt, it'll look, make it look old. So that's kind of the idea with the brown texture paint. But you could very easily, uh, you know, use like a rust colored paint or anything. You wouldn't need to use the texture paint. It was just like a little, an extra layer of detail I was going to when I did this. The thing about the project is this mask had the cowl. Uh, when you wear it, you know, it covers your head and all that kind of thing. But that's not particularly great for this project uh, because I want to show the neck, right? So I'm going to cut around. I'm going to trim around, you know, rag it up with the scissors and cut the neck part off so that, you know, you can see all the detail that we spent all this time doing on the neck, right? And uh, yeah. I painted the stump on the neck this bright uh, red, this glossy red, and I took the bone out because I didn't want to paint that red, uh, so I just left it unglued when I, you know, when I tried it out, but I just pulled it out. Our chain's all dried up, so it's looking much better, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this kind of brownish wash on it to make it look old, to make it look stained, that kind of thing. And it's kind of like, almost like a rusty color, a dark rusty color. So that's what I'm going for, just going to kind of paint this on there and uh, get some nice age and stain on this chain. When you're doing this stuff, it's really nice to have these kind of gloves to protect your skin from the stuff. I mean, the paint won't hurt you, but you know, then you don't walk around with stained skin. So uh, when you're, particularly when you're doing washes, it can be nice to wear these kind of like rubber gloves. All right, let's work on that monster face, right? So I'm gonna use this brown wash to paint the bright teeth they're way too bright right this guy didn't just go to the dentist or something i want to stain those up so i'm going to put some brown wash on the teeth and i'm going to use this kind of mauve on the teeth and i'll put it at the top and that'll kind of accent you know near the gum and that kind of thing a little darker near the gum kind of drag that down on the tooth and you get a really nice effect the thing that really attracted me to this mask besides being cheap was that and after a halloween sale was that uh, it has a kind of a really dramatic pose, right? I like that, you know, way too large kind of maw, you know, and just the crinkled face. I like, I like how dramatic the face is. I'm also going to wash the bone, give it some age there. Going to paint in the mouth, make it darker with the black wash. Paint some on the face. Bring out some of the you know, the cracks, paint in the cracks. You can see how that kind of gives it some depth. I have some cranberry here. I'm just kind of touching up a little bit. Open sores and wounds. Pulling it between the teeth to define the teeth. Looking pretty ghastly, pretty ghastly. Just what I was going for. You can see here I've just painted the neck with uh, burnt umber, uh, acrylic craft paint. I'm going to use this mauve and I'm going to get a dry brush on here. I did all this kind of, you know, veiny texture with the hot glue gun. And I've got the texture from the uh, paper towel. It really looks like kind of folded skin. And that just helps bring all that out when you use the, the lighter color on the darker color. That's looking so gnarly. And now I can use that tan and go on the face a little bit to bring out some of the highlights. Because there's a lot of really good texture on this mask. And, uh, you know, when they do that kind of painting on these things, they don't really take that much time, you know, doing it. They just kind of spray it and they're done. So this little uh, extra time you spend on, you know, bringing out those highlights and details really gives uh, depth to it, depth to the face. I love it. Look at all that detail popping out. So wonderful. Really let you see all the gory details. The idea with this sucker was that it was always kind of a gory trophy, right? That, you know, the monster hunter severed the head and then, you know, put it on the hook. So that's the, that's the big idea with this project, right? So that's why I got those hooks. And uh, now we just need to make that happen. So how are we going to do that? Okay, so we gouged in the back of the head. And, uh, you know, we got that thing. And we cut, we cut a hole in the front of the mask. So what I need to do is make this all line up. Okay, so I'm going to take my plastic hook and I'm going to cut it. Make sure you use uh, strong shears. So I'll cut it. I'm going to kind of test fit, right? 
but you know that's not going to stay very well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these chopsticks and that'll give it some strength and you'll see what I'm going to do here I'm going to use my awl and you know dig into the styrofoam with it push it into the styrofoam get a nice hole and then that's where the hot glue comes in squirt into that hole push the chopstick in and got a nice bond it's not going anywhere so that'll kind of go over the chopstick like that but I want to add a little more strength to it so I'm going to add another chopstick so I'm going to glue those two chopsticks together get a nice bond and then I'll just trim off the excess Make sure it's nice and secure to the head as well to each other. Now what I want to do is cut the piece of the hook that's coming out of the front of the head, right? Because the idea is that the hook is going through the back of the skull and out the front. All right, so I got that hook. So I'm going to put a bunch of glue in the hole there that I created. And then just hot glue the hook in there. Now the hook's not holding anything up really, so it doesn't have to be you know that super secure like the the back of the hook because it's it's holding up the weight of the head. I don't want it bending or cracking or whatever. So, but the front, yeah, it's just it's just for show. It's not holding anything, so I'm just going to get it in place and then uh, hot glue it. Ooh, that's looking really cool. The front hook is nice and secure, but I want to bl kind of blend it into the uh, mask. So I'm going to put some hot glue around it and pull it up on the hook and onto the mask. And that'll look like it's actually, you know, puncturing the skull and not uh, just a hole in the mask. <laughs> you know, with no, no repercussions for, the, for a metal hook going through your head. All right, now comes the back. So I'm going to glue onto the chopsticks. Nice, uh, lots of glue. So we get a nice secure bond. And just push the back of the hook into that notch of the skull. So that'll be really nice and secure. Oh wow, that the, the effect of that is really cool. This project's really starting to come together. Look at that. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to hit it with some more of that uh, gloss red. So I'm concentrating it around the hook so it'll drip down. See that? Like nice blood drips coming down. Sweet. Here we go, nice look. Now one thing that happened with me with this project was the mask is like a rubbery material and uh, the paint after several days still was a little bit tacky so how I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to actually go over it with my glue gun and uh, that'll give it a nice layer to you know secure it as well as to make it look you know a little more gory actually see how nice that looks because the glue's clear so you're seeing the red through it so that's kind of a nice way to deal with that now the paint on the uh, hook is fine it's it's dry but the but the on the mask is but the paint on the mask was a little bit tacky even after several days I always wanted to have the thing kind of looking at you, you know, hanging there looking at you, which is just a really creepy idea. But it has these kind of mesh things in the eyes where, you know, you can look through it when you wear the mask. But that's not allowing me to put the uh, glass eyes in, so I'm going to cut that out with the scissors. Or at least, you know, loosen the edges so that the piece can, you know, fit in the eye socket. So I got these glass eyes off of eBay. I got a bunch of different ones. And look, I really thought these were really cool, weird looking eyes. So just pop that in the socket while the hot glue is still liquid. And you got a really cool, weird looking eye there, I think. So yeah, I'm just trimming the edge of that mesh so it doesn't, you know, restrain the eye, the glass eye, and malform the socket. Because it's designed to cover up the hole and hide your eyes, not to uh, hold an eye in the socket. 
these uh, glass eyes are too big for it. Same thing, just squirt some glue in the hole and then pop the glass eye in. Oh yeah, nice and creepy and really sells it that it's an inhuman monster, not a human thing because the eyes are so strange looking. I'm going to use this plaid Duraclear gloss varnish because there are some areas I want to look uh, wet and glossy. So I like to do just pour it in the cup, makes it easy, or the lid from the thing makes it easier to handle. Going to kind of paint in the nose, nostrils there, the ripped open nostrils, the teeth and the mouth. You can paint some of the little areas that are exposed on the mask. Also, of course, the eyes. And then we're, we were bleeding on the front. That'll glossy up the hot glue. And this gloss is water-based, so you can just wash your brush off with soap and water when you're done. I picked up some burlap from the fabric store, and this stuff was dirt cheap. I kind of wanted to have a cowl for the thing. I don't really, I didn't really like the cowl that came with it. So I have this gouache, and I'm just, I just want to stain this so it doesn't look like this pristine, <laughs> you know, garment. It's supposed to be, you know, something that this wore, you know, um, this disgusting, foul, dirty creature wore, and uh, I want to make it look that way. This is a dark brown wash. Here we go. So here's what it looks like. Uh, I think it came out really nice. and It's going to look great when we put this on the head. All right. I've got my head and here's the burlap. Now what I need to do is fit it on here. So I'm going to kind of rough measure here. I got a hole poked in there and that's pretty much covers up the whole thing, <laughs> right? I'm just going to take my scissors and start kind of just tearing up the ends. Once you get the ends sufficiently sliced up, you can just start pulling them out and you get really rough uh, looking ends, you know, because it's like the burlap is a really rough weave. So you can start pulling the pieces off and you get like a really shabby look. Just continue to do it until you're satisfied with how cruddy it looks because <laughs> you want it to look like it's just this rag that's been worn by this monster, right? All right, nice. So we got a nice hanging uh, cow there, right? And it uh, looks great. I think it really adds to the effect of this thing. All right, it's go time. So I have a tub here, and I'm going to use my 50% water, 50% white glue, and just wet the cow here that was already on it. It's okay if it gets on anything else. It's, you know, it's going to dry clear, so it won't be a problem. Make sure it's nice and rubbed into the cow. Now what I want to do with the tub is wet the burlap. So I just poured water in there. And I'm going to get it damp. The reason I'm going to do this is it'll be easier for it to absorb the glue. I find that when something's wet, it absorbs the glue easier than uh, trying to just wet the whole thing with the glue. You use a lot, a lot, a lot of glue. This helps with that, especially something this big. I'm just gonna throw the bath water out and put the baby back in there. And like I said, I'll just start adding this 50% water, 50% white glue. Just get it nice and saturated. And like I said, it takes a lot less water and glue this way than it would for, you know, if it was just totally dry. One little section would have soaked all that up. Just keep working the glue into it. All right, now I have that saturated. It is ready for the head. Here is my head, and the uh, other cowl is dry there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drape this thing over the head in the configuration that I did when I kind of dry fit it. So get it set up like it was, just how I like it. And so cool. <laughs> I love it. Look at that. That's so great. All right, now I'm going to let this sucker dry. Just going to hang it up outside. You can see some of the water and glue is just dripping down off of it. All right, it is solid and dry. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of splatter blood onto it. Uh, this is just red craft acrylic paint. Just put on a brush and flick it, and it'll splatter all over it. So some more gruesomeness. And uh, really, it's ready to go up in my game room. Here we are, so when players enter my game room, this is one of the first things they see, that monster head hanging there on the chains. You can see I hooked it back up to the chains. I have a hook on the wall holding it up. And doesn't that look wonderfully gory? I just love it. So you can see I have it hooked up there. Uh, go down and you can see I have the hooks. And all that uh, work paid off, I think. It really paid off. And the, the hooks hang in there, so there's an ex extra hooks. I think that's wonderful. You can see up under the neck here the veins hanging down, just super gory and gross. And uh, the cowl is just, you know, super hard because the glue all dried. And I just think it's really a wonderful addition to the game room. And it just really draws your eye as soon as you enter and sets the mood.